has this read, and um, you know, this is usually a moment of, of disappointment, I have to admit, uh, because um, if your standards are high, you're going to get maybe one in four uh, of your reads to be worthwhile uh, proceeding with. So I'm, I'm pretty ruthless at this stage about trying to eliminate reads that will be a waste of time for me to, um, to work on. Um, so we're going to test it on bassoon uh, right off the bat. Uh, one thing to do first um, to even find out whether the read is worth testing is to um, test the pitch of the crow. Okay? And the reed can be tuned um, in this way. Uh, the predominant pitch of the reed for um, A440 on your bassoon should be about an E or an F above middle C on the piano. The way to get the pitch is to put your lips very carefully on the first wire so you're not in, your lips are not um, exerting any influence on how the reed vibrates. It's kind of like a Renaissance instrument where the reed is recessed. Uh, and blow softly increasing the, the speed of the air until a single pitch um, appears. So that pitch, we're going to find out what that is. So I've got an E there, okay? So that means that the reed is, is pretty much uh, finished in some very basic ways, and it, and it will be a, a worthwhile reed as far as its tuning is concerned. All right, good. Let's also check a few other things on the read. Um, two things I like to do when I'm, when I'm finishing a read. One, I like to do a hairpin long tone to check the uh, volume of the read, both at the soft end and at the loud end. Okay, so pick a nice easy note like C in the staff and see, see how soft you can start. So uh, I like to do a long tone, uh, starting soft, getting loud, and then soft again to see about how easy the read is to control and, and what sort of dynamic the re uh, range the read has. So. so the read is very strong and it's hard to get a pianissimo start, but it has a nice full sound, a bit hollow sounding to my ears. So um, because it feels stable to me, I'm gonna go ahead and do some more work on it. And what I'm going to do is I know that I've left the back of the reed uh, somewhat thick. So I'm gonna take a little more off the reed and, and get it to um, be a little more manageable in the mouth. Do not work on the reed when you've got it hooked, the bassoon hooked in the seat strap. Um, reed shavings can get under the pad seats and, and cause a leak, actually. Um, so it's really good to have a stand or just to put the bassoon down when you're doing this. It's tempting to have the reed, the bassoon right next to you when you're doing it, but your repair technician will thank you if you separate reed from bassoon at this stage. So I'm just thinning things all over in the back of the reed, just to make it a little easier to play. I'm trying to work with a very smooth stroke here as well, um, so that I get rid of any high spots on this reed. <clears throat> in addition to that, I'm going to enhance the, uh, the, the, the tip a little bit by thinning it at the very, very edge, like the, the last millimeter of, of blade. <clears throat> this will give me an easier um, start to my pianissimo sound. So I'm going to just do a little more finishing on my tip before I try the read again. Okay. Notice I'm not soaking the reed again. Now, depending upon your climate, yeah. you may need to do yeah, this. I just went and tried to lift it, and I, I'm not sure I can actually lift it. Okay. So I don't, I don't necessarily re-soak the reed uh, when I'm working on it and scraping between scrapes. I don't, I don't believe that new reeds need to be re-soaked particularly. I don't like the, um, the waterlogged sound they tend to get through repeated soakings while you're breaking them in. Now, if you live in a really dry climate, you may need to re-soak your reed in this, in this part, but I, I would avoid it um, so that uh, the reed has a clear sound when you're, uh, when you're working on it. 
Also, uh, the reed is very reactive to this stage, at this stage, the things you're doing to it, and the tip may open more than you want. Always get the tip opening the way you want it before you try it. And you can either use the pliers or just massage it like I am uh, with my fingers. So let's try the C again, see if we can get a better penis smell. Sounds just a little more refined, so I'm, 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 I'm feeling better about the read. The other thing I like to do, and this is a way of checking the symmetry of your scraping, is to do um, a broken arpeggio slowly slurred on the read. And this teaches you how to play on the read, and it also um, tells you uh, how easily the read makes um, big interval changes. Um, so, what we're going to be listening for is a nice smooth legato and um, no kind of bumps or clicks in the, uh, in the arpeggio that I play, so. So the one from B up to high G was a little a little hesitant, wasn't it? It's got a little bit of a click. The reed is a little weak up there. Now it may stiffen up and that may improve, but that also may tell me that there's some asymmetry between the two blades in my scraping. So I'm going to go to the dial indicator and see if I can locate where that, that is. Um, I like to do just uh, kind of middle register work with this. I don't play a lot of high notes on the reed um, because I don't think it's a good idea to be squeezing the reed shut when you're trying to get it to vibrate. So generally I'll stay um, below high A, for instance, when I'm, I'm trying a new reed. For me, generally the reed stiffens up as I break it in and my high notes come in naturally. I don't worry too much about having them there at the beginning. I also do want to check the low register to see whether the back of the reed is, is, is close to being finished. So let's do that now. sound, right? The low D is not weak, seems pretty well in tune, pretty even, so I'm pretty happy with this read uh, to start off with, except for that little weakness up high. It still feels a little unmanageable in the mouth, so I think there's some, uh, some places uh, for uh, scraping that I could find. Um, one a really good thing to do now is to sandpaper the whole blade to get off of those high spots that are there, so I'm going to do that now and then play on the read a little bit. And it's the same principle as what I did when I was sandpapering the tip. Um, you want to just go over the whole reed and uh, from front to back. And so using my thumb as a pressure point, I'm just sanding the whole, the whole blade of this reed. In my reed uh, scrape, smoothness is very important. Um, I do not um, carve uh, areas into my reed particularly. My reed has got more of a blended scrape uh, from front to back and from center to sides. There, there aren't really regions on my reed. They're just more uh, gradual transitions, I guess is a good way to say it. Okay, so I've sanded that away. Now let's just see if I got any better um, sound or what's improved or what hasn't. Tip is a little open, so I'm going to close that down again. But. It's pretty weak up there, it's still a little weak, but the slur was smoother anyway, so I'm going to go with that. Um, one more thing I like to do with my, my uh, first scrapes is to make sure my second wire is tight. Um, when, I, when I wire the reed up, I, I purposely leave the second wire a tiny bit loose to allow for cane expansion. Um, quite often I end up needing to um, tighten that wire a little bit. This may help um, the reed close better and, 
I think you may notice a little difference in the sound when I get this one just right. So it's a common uh, adjustment for me that I do after the tip is cut. Um, let's see if this sounds better. <laughs> Um, resonance sound, and I think what's happening there is now the fulcrum uh, of the reed is engaged. Uh, we'll talk more about that when we discuss the, the beveling stage, but you can tell that reed is more power and more focus. 